like to call this meeting to order. Welcome to the Scarborough Board of Education meeting. Today is August 9th, 2018. Could I please have the attendance? Yep. Mrs. Durgan? Here. Ms. Casalonis? Here. Ms. Perry? Here. Ms. Starr? Here. Mr. Hinton? Here. Could you please join me in the pledge? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, agenda item 4.0, adjustments. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? Yes, there are a couple. We've added 11.7.3, Wentworth, uh, Wentworth School Assistant Principal, 11.7.4, High School Assistant Principal, 14 was edit, um, and edited 15 to change the language from superintendent contract to central office administrator's contract. Thank you. And then adjournment, of, of course, would be moved to 16. Uh, agenda item 5.0, public comment on agenda items. Would love from anyone who would like to make a comment? Seeing none, uh, moving on. Uh, agenda item 6.0, superintendent's report. I have a couple of things, and really given the summer months, it's a report and recognition kind of combined in one. Um, the first thing I wanted to do was just um, share with you that we had the first few days of our summer leadership retreat with the whole leadership council. All 20 members were present for the first day, and we did some department updates and team building activities. And then on the second and third, we really got into logistics and goal setting and um, really getting ourselves ready for a successful start to the school year. Um, and I want to thank all of the leadership council members for being there and being a part of that work and being present and in the room. It's not easy when you're thinking about getting a building or getting a department up and running, um, but we did a good job keeping each other on task. And it was, um, I, I found it to be three very beneficial days. And I'm hoping that when September comes, we did it a, a week earlier than we usually do. Um, and so I think for some folks it felt like kind of like, ah, I want, there's so many things I want to do, and it kind of made us feel like we were a week behind, but we were really a week ahead. Um, so I'm excited to check in with the leadership team at the end of the month and see if it, if it really, if it was better, you know, being earlier than later. Um, we also have had several peak electrical demand days, and so this is one of the things that our director of facilities, Todd Jepson, um, does regularly keeps us on our toes when we know that we're going to have peak electrical demand days and then we try to reduce our electrical load in the different buildings in different ways by like turning off the air or um, sh you know turning off the power and he um, one of the amazing things about Todd is not only is he really smart and savvy when it comes to maintaining our facilities and all of um, our grounds and all of that but he's also a really great communicator and so I've really appreciated the way that he's um, communicated in advance to not only all of our building administrators, but also all of the communi community services folks who are using our facilities and um, ESY and kinder camp people if it affects those schools as well. So just want to thank Todd for that and um, let the community know that we're always trying to find ways to save money and be more efficient. And that does help us conserve a lot of energy and save many dollars. So thanks to Todd for that. And then the last three days, we have had the opportunity to work with 36 of our educators, some administrators, some union leaders, some teachers from every phase level, and other support staff and specialists to take a look at our professional development system in the district and really talk about how we can redesign that time we're using. So I wanted to give a shout out and thank these folks for committing nine hours of their summer vacation to thinking really strategically and thoughtfully about how we can maximize all of the guaranteed professional learning time that we have across the district. And um, they will play a critical role in bringing this conversation back to their individual phase levels as they started creating an action plan. So um, our next steps are to bring the plan to the leadership team for input and then it'll go back out to the whole k-12 pd design team for input so that it's ready to share with our whole district on the first day of school and it'll be kind of this living and breathing document as we roll out our plan and really think about how can we work smarter and help our teachers manage their workload in a way that feels really motivating and um, inspirational for them 
So it's great work, um, excellent commitment from our staff. I think they probably would have stayed for a few extra days if we had budget for that and time for that. Um, but really looking forward to what the final product will be in the next couple of weeks. Thank you. Uh, next um, 7.0 is the chair's report. Uh, we are getting closer to the start of the school year. By the time we have our next regular board meeting, we'll be in session. Um, school will be in session, and our staff and students will be together again for a new year of learning. So I know our middle school and high school students are anxiously awaiting to hear about their crew and teacher assignments <laughs> um, for the year. Um, bus schedules have been released. Emails were sent to all families um, in July, I believe. And the schedule is available on the school website. Uh, the bus schedule will not be published in the leader this year, so it's, it's just through email and it will be on, on the website as well. Um, so be, be sure to check that schedule because, the, you know, th since the bus route times are slightly altered due to the slight change in, in start times this year. Um, as Julie mentioned, August is also a time for staff to prepare for the year ahead. And I was invited, invited to join the Professional Development Redesign Committee this week um, that was formed to allow, you know, more collaborative process and to address some of the issues surrounding the vote of no confidence. And I was completely, as, as Julie was, I was very impressed with our staff and their commitment to work together to find ways to make the professional development fit their needs. Uh, during our discussion in the meetings, you know, there was a positive energy in the room, and each phase level developed a solid foundation that can be used by all the professional staff uh, to fully form their professional development plans. Um, I loved what one, one of the members had said um, when she shared her vision, she said, in the field of education, there are constant updates, and we strive to be a district that responds to that by offering opportunities for all staff to continuously improve their practice to better serve our students. And, and to me, that, that says it all. And um, I can't say enough for the staff that, that were there and, and that shared their thoughts and, and, and their ideas for, for how to form this new um, program. Um, we also, today was also a great day during the um, meetings because we started with comments from the Scarborough Education Association uh, and they were very pleased that the superintendent and administration was acknowledging their needs and responding to their desire for a professional development plan that, that better reflects what they would like to have moving forward. So uh, lastly, I just want to say one more time, we are looking forward to the elections for new school board members in November. As I mentioned at our last meeting, any interested candidates can take out nominating papers until September 5th, and each candidate is required to take out, um, to have a paper with, get signatures from at least 25 residents. Uh, the candidates' night will be October 11th. It's hosted by the Chamber of Commerce, uh, and five seats are open. Three of the positions are for three, year, uh, three years, and two of the positions will be just one year. I know some members of our community have already taken out nomination papers, and we appreciate their interest in serving on the board. <coughs> and that is it for the chair's report. Um, moving on to 8.0 committee reports. And so, let's see, we're going to start with Leanne. Sure. Do you want to start with finance? Or there there is there's no, not, yeah. So there is no update for finance. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, we won't have our first meeting until September 4th, and that will be at 6 o'clock here in Chambers. Um, that's it for that. Policy, um, we postponed next week's meeting in order to enjoy the last couple of weeks of summer before we kick back off, and that meeting will be scheduled for early September. And that's it. All righty. Um, Hillary, do you have anything for communications? So um, communications, we had a meeting on um, Tuesday, right? Tuesday. Um, we continue to work on the, uh, for, for lack of a better term, we're calling it the what happens when calendar. Um, we have most of the information for what happens in a typical year, um, but we're still playing with how to format it so that it's easy to read and understand. Um, and once that's finished, that'll be um, posted on our website and hopefully it will also help our new board members as they come on to kind of orient them to um, what happens when. <laughs> so. Um, the other thing that we did was uh, we reviewed the meeting-wise agenda format again, and um, we're, I, I'd like to reiterate the recommendation for the, um, for the other board committees to also use this. Um, it would bring us into alignment with the rest of the district and the rest of the committees that we're involved on. Um, so the committees that aren't board committees, but where 
um, board members are members of a committee are already using this format because they're they are um, because because the district is using it so that would just kind of allow us to be in alignment with them um, there is some question as to whether the notes from a meeting should should be posted online so for, for now we'd like to just recommend that each new agenda so we'd like to recommend that we use these agendas and then each new agenda is copied onto its own document and posted online separately um, for the public with along with the date and time and location of the meetings um, we also discussed uh, again um, rec that we'd like to recommend hosting a board member q a with candidates um, ideally this would happen after the candidates night which is on october 11th um, and before the election. Um, and the vision is to have a more casual Q&A for candidates to ask board members how membership affects their lives, how expectations for memberships may or may not have been met, what type of work we do, um, something that the, f and if it is something that the full board agrees to, we can work out the details of the format and the date in committee. Um, and the last thing was um, we talked about implementing a district spotlight award. Um, I sent some information about that um, to the other board members, but just for anyone in the public. Um, the idea is that a student and maybe a staff member, we haven't, we're not sure about that yet, so a student and or a staff member um, would be spotlighted and it would be to recognize exceptional students at board meetings. Um, I f we feel like it would augment school pride by encouraging students and staff to think regularly about the positive work that's going on, them, on around them. Not that I don't think they do think regularly about it, but um, to think regularly about it in, in the as and, and then be able to take it the next step and say, this is so amazing that we wanna recognize you. Um, it would be something that would encourage team building and pride because it allow it'll allow staff an easy way to nominate students and and or team men members for recognition um, and that recognition can be added to um, a student's records and or a staff member's file um, and it would also offer the community a glimpse into some of the great things that we're doing in our schools um, you know every month I think that's it. The next meeting um, hasn't been scheduled yet, but we do anticipate working on our comprehensive, uh, comprehensive communities, comprehensive communication strategy, uh, along with any of these things if they are in, approved. Great, thank you. Sounds like a lot's going on. <laughs> I know. Uh, Jackie, did you have anything with negotiations or legislation? Yes, the board has been informed uh, that the bus driver contract is going to go to mediation. We have no date at the present time. Uh, we will meet in executive session uh, a little later on to discuss the administrator's contract, uh, but I feel very confident that that will be approved by the board. And uh, I look forward to that because they deserve the contract and they worked hard and worked with us. And I'll say more about that later. Is there anything on legis legislative, is there anything with your no, legislative work? Only what you've seen that has come out of main school management. It uh, hopefully, uh, they're evidently, there are evidently some legislators who wish to continue meeting uh, to try and, and firm up some of the things that are still out in limbo. But I'll, if I get word on that prior to it being posted, I will let you know. Mary, I think there were two motions in Hillary's, or Hillary needed two motions on the Communications Committee. Oh, okay, I wasn't sure if she was just sharing or well, if she I was, was making a motion. Well, I was sharing what happened, but I don't know when you want to do. Uh, well, so one of the motions would be to untable the agenda. 
Okay. Um, the oh, the agenda, the the, the data. Sorry, wise the agenda. data wise. The yep. meeting, is it meeting wise or data wise? Meeting wise. That's what I thought. Oh, it is meeting wise. Okay. Yep. Meeting wise agenda. Um, the other would be the we do have to have a board approval if we want to do the Q and A with the candidates. Okay. Well, do we want to do it? Do you want to move to untable and then someone can second that? Yeah. You would need uh, to make the motion. Okay, so Separately. I um I'll Separately. Move to yeah, yeah, just you do one at a time. Yeah. Yeah. I move to untable the motion to um, use the meeting wise format for our committee meetings. Second. Any discussion on that? I just have one question. Why? Why do we wish to do this? So there's a few reasons. One of them um, I mentioned before, which is that it would bring us into in line with the rest of the district so that the meetings that we're a part of as members of a committee use the same agenda format as the meetings of our the board's committee that, we, you know, the board's standing committees. Um, the second reason is um, it helps, it, it's really helpful to organize um, instead of having everybody in a committee taking notes on their paper and oh this is my task and this is what I need to do for next time um, it's all in one format um, and you can do anything from assigning tasks to people and then it's on your Google it'll come up on your on your um, email that you have a task from this meeting um, you you can you can look back um, because it's a running agenda and, and meeting notes. You can easily like just scroll down and look and see, oh yeah, that we did this last time, so we might want to talk about it again this time. Um, and then the third reason is that it would allow other um, board members who may not be on a committee to keep updated with what the agendas are what, and what the notes were that were happening. And who would be responsible for doing the notes? Um, you pick a person at each meeting, um, like I did it, well actually Julie and I both did it at the last two communications meetings, but um, at the beginning of the meeting you pick somebody to be the timekeeper, somebody to be the note taker, and somebody to be the facilitator. It just, I, th I think it puts a lot of structure around the meetings and it ensures that each one of the committee meetings is adhering to the same process as we're going through. I would, I would ask there, this, oh, go ahead, John, I, you I, can, I can buy that and see how it works. That, that's fine. You need to understand that negotiations. No, right, it doesn't apply to negotiations because you don't take notes. Well, because negotiations well, under the law is, is right. an executive session unless mm -hmm. both mm -hmm. parties agree to have open negotiations. So, right, uh, we, that was with the understanding that negotiations right. wouldn't. I've always said we are going to meet. I've never said where. <laughs> or I've said we've had a meeting. Right. And I've always kept the board updated in executive session because that's mm -hmm. what's absolutely mm -hmm. necessary. But people need to understand that just because we may have this as a board for standing committees, that it does not apply to negotiations. Right. Thanks for clarifying that. Will this be in a policy? Like, will this, or is this just something that we're voting to do? I just, you know, I just want to make sure, like, is this it's something? It's not a policy. So it's, it's not a policy. that we're so voting So it'll to just be, so do. are we, I think I asked, are we piloting this kind of, are we? Um, yeah, I think, you know, we started using it in communications. The rest of the district is using it. Um, I think we should, I mean, it would be my recommendation to vote to use it until, you, we could put a time limit on it if you want and say, no, I don't want a time limit. Year I, and see, but yeah. obviously, any board can vote to undo it. Yeah. Um, it's not a policy, it's, it's just a recommendation. Yeah. I think it's just nice to start something saying, okay, we're going to pilot this just because right. then you can kind of you can look at it and see does it work. You know, it works for the, you know, for the other folks mm -hmm. in the district, but, you know, we are not the same, you know, necessarily. Right. So, so, you know, even though I like the, I like, I like meeting wise, I, I, I do like it. I think it's um, it's a good system, but I, I do think it's important just to give the board the chance to kind of 
try it out and see mm -hmm. if it's see if it works. Well, I've always been told that anything that the board votes on becomes a board policy. Mm -hmm. Now, whether it becomes part of the policy manual mm -hmm. is a different topic. Mm -hmm. But it is a once we affirm something, right. that is a board policy. But yeah, you may consider um, adding it to policy BDE that's on the agenda later for our first reading, which is your standing committee's policy, because it does not yet make mention to even publishing agendas yeah. for the agenda format. That, uh, to me, that might be something we might want to, like in policy, I think policy might want to look at other school districts to see in their BDE or you know whatever policy they have for committees, do they talk about agendas like you know what how, how is it done at other in other districts or you know or if there's any recommendations from well, could be, school management or German Woods could be part of the policy on, on agenda or yes, it could yes. could be part of uh, the policy on standing committees I mean it, yeah it could be it, it probably if we affirm this it probably should be referenced both places mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I'm. Would you like to do a vote? I'm in support, but I'm just not sure if it needs to be part of the policy. I, I kind of would. I'd like to know that. I guess is what I'd like to know. But it's not that I'm not in support of it. I do support it. I think it's a great idea. But I just don't know if it needs to be part of the policy, or if we can just well, vote on. If we can vote yes, but then should it go back? We can vote yes, but then. Can that be looked at in we policy? Can, we can look at it in policy. That's not a problem to add that through. I'll look at what other districts have done. I, I think that having that structure is really important, especially as we're trying to create norms moving forward. It gives new board members again structure of how. Oh, yeah, no, we I, don't, I don't. No, I don't argue with the with the value in it. That's not. I just want to be sure that. But know. we were, we were told that we couldn't use it unless the board agreed to use it. I really feel like we it's need true. to. We need to either say yeah. yes or no and put an end to okay. the discussion, and we can look to add it to a policy. Okay. But yeah. the, the, the problem is that this was not part of the agenda, so the public has not had an opportunity to address it. So uh, I think that if we refer it to policy, and when we get to the policy, we can ask that it be applied to a second reading. These are going to be first readings tonight, and then you bring it back at the second reading. And you can make that mm -hmm. approval, if you will, as we discuss the policy. So Jackie, if I have, like, for example, the other two things from communications, would you suggest that I have those added as new business on the agenda instead of making a motion from my committee report? I think if we're talking about better communications, mm -hmm. that when we're discussing <coughs> items that involve, especially that involve the public, that it's important that the public have, if they wish, have the opportunity to comment on it. Mm -hmm. And that's all I'm saying. We're trying to be more open and we have talked about this, but it wasn't on tonight's agenda per se. And even the one that, even when we tabled, uh, that should have been here tonight. Mm -hmm. And and I should have paid attention to that, and I didn't, and I apologize for that. So, uh, but I I just think that we should. How do I want to put it? If we say we're doing one thing, we've got to do it consistently. That's all I'm saying. Okay. So just point of order, was the motion to <coughs> untangle this? Uh -huh. So it sounds like you should vote on whether or not to untable this. Oh, yes. Right? So. And then if you're later on, when you get to the policy, if you want to talk about adjusting the policy, maybe. It's That's better. perfectly OK. So do you want to leave it on the table then and bring it up as its own? What 
if you want to leave it on the table, you, if you want to leave it on the table, you'll vote no. Right. If you want to untable it, you'll. It is perfectly all right to <coughs> take it off the table. Now, I may be nitpicking, but in my earlier life on the board, I used to read Robert's Rules of Order. So, <laughs> and and if you take it off the table, it becomes an agenda item, mm -hmm. right here right. and now. Mm -hmm. So if we've done that, my suggestion is that it, it be discussed as a policy. We can affirm it or we can wait until we get to that policy and say that we would like it there and, and have it there for the second reading. But I thought your concern was that we didn't have it on the agenda. Originally it is my concern, and I'm, ta I'm taking responsibility because when I read the agenda, I should have said I tabled that. It should be on the agenda. But because it was tabled to the next meeting, mm -hmm. it is perfectly legal to take it off the table and discuss it. Right, but I guess I was saying, do you want to leave it on the table so that it can be an agenda item for the next meeting, and that way the public would have, that would alleviate your concerns about the public having an ability to comment on it. If we move it to policy in the second reading, that solves the problem. Okay. So we're, we're also, so we're moving it for the second so have, reading, which would be the next. Vote. We have to vote. We have to vote. You have to yeah. vote right now if you're going to untable it or not. So you're a motion. Make a motion. Pardon me? Okay, so the motion on the t the motion is to whether is to untable this item. So you have to so, yes. So you're saying, Jackie, I just want to make sure I'm understanding, if it moves to the second reading, then we would vote no to untable it because it's going to be discussed at the second. Doesn't matter which we, if we take it off the table now, we can vote on it. What I will then do is, if you wish to do that, is make an amendment that we move it to the policy. For the sec to have it there for the second reading. Either way, it works. Okay. So we need to vote to untable and then. Okay. okay. So all those in favor of the motion to untable? Four or five? Five. Any opposed? None. Um, any discussion on amendments? Yes, I'm, I move uh, to amend the motion that it be further discussed as part of the policy uh, BDE, Board Standing Committees. Second. Any discussion on that? No, I just wanted to note that it also is going to be the other policy. What I don't know what the other policy is, though, the agenda the, the, policy. It can be, yes, absolutely. They, they cross-reference. Yeah. And that's up to the superintendent to to do that with the policy committee. Okay. And so, okay, so so then, um, all those in favor? Of the amendment. Of the amendment. Five, all opposed? Zero. Um, so okay, so that is, and so the, the second thing, given the light of it not being on the agenda, are you, are you gonna wait and do that later so that the public um, does have time to add that to the agenda for the next meeting. Yeah. The only issue is, yeah, that's fine. The only issue is the um, district spotlight. <coughs> okay. I would have liked to have started that at the beginning oh, of the school see. year. Oh, I see. I see. Um, well, do we, do you have a, well, if you have a motion, I mean, it, No, I see Jackie's point. I, yeah. I, Prefer it to be an agenda item. So, well, um, people I think in, in, in subcommittee, we talked about possibly starting it in October, didn't we? Yeah. Well, we start. We talked about having the first um, recognition be in October, mm -hmm. but I would have liked to have the information, the information. go out to all the yeah. staff and administrators in September. And they may. You know, that's the point. If it's an agenda item, those folks may have some input on it. Well, the, yeah, the positive is. thing is our next meeting is the fourth. Yeah. yeah. So, so it is right in the beginning. It, you know, we can turn that around pretty quickly to get that communication out to staff. Yeah. yeah. And if you ha we have all started on the documents to get that ready 
So yeah, everyone will have a packet of that so they can see it on the fourth. Okay, perfect. All right. So um, I think moving on to, I don't think there are any other committee reports, so moving on to 9.0, student representative report. Awesome. Long wait there. <laughs> I know. It's a long conversation. Um, Always the highlight of the meeting. Which yeah. Well, I you. <laughs> It's really hard to put together a student report in the summer in two weeks, so I don't have much today. But these were photos I got to take. Uh, oh wait, the Oak Hill players, uh, they started cleaning up their costume closet. Cause now that we have a new director, they've done all their casting, all the students have been casted for their musical. Uh, the show is sh All Shook Up. Oh. I don't know if you've heard of it. I don't know much about it. I just know there's a lot of Elvis music. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so that's Some exciting. Of us know. Yeah, I think I'm. Yeah. I think I'm gonna have the stage manager come and chat about it later in October. But nice. I just thought I'd share some photos of the work they have to come. Um, <clears throat> next. Is that all the costumes, Dylan, or is that's, that all stuff that needs to be organized? That's all the different Until costumes they like, have. Oh. It. Yeah, I don't know how I got wrapped into organizing that with them. Um, <clears throat> I don't have any specific numbers, but the, I just thought I'd share some uh, photos from the softball car wash fundraiser. Um, un it was kind of convenient that the night that I had talked about this at our last meeting, they changed to the rain date. <laughs> so I had like, just <laughs> given the date and come find out it was like that Saturday. Um, <clears throat> But I just thought I'd share some photos. Looked like it was fun. A lot, lot of comments on Facebook said there was a great, great turnout. And, well, it looked like better weather than the rain. Um, <clears throat> before I talk about this, I didn't get a slide for it, but it is confirmed in o October, uh, Francesca and I will be doing a blood drive for the students and staff at the high school. Um, it'll be only open to staff and students, so unlike the first one it, with public, it'll just be staff and students. The goal is to get 39 pints, <clears throat> so I'll have more information to come later on about that. Dylan, why do we make, what goes into making the decision to open it to the public versus just staff and students? Um, Mr. Legage recommended that it was for staff and students. I think it's because it's easier to have just students and staff do it rather than have public coming in and out of the school. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, is that all staff or just high school staff? I think it can be open to all staff as long as there's a, uh, what is this, Carbon Public Schools ID? Yeah. Yeah, as long as you have some sort of school ID, you should be able to get in. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. That's the third <clears throat> student-led blood drive we'll have had in less than a year. Yeah. yeah. And Francesca told me the other day that combining the two drives we've already done, they've saved over 200 lives. Oh, wow. So it's wonderful. It's quite impressive. And it seems like there's been talk about trying to start a Red Cross club so they can keep going at the school. So we'll, once that's starting to get worked out, we'll hopefully get more drives coming. So there's actually Red Cross clubs? You, yeah, there's a lot of schools have wow. them. It's a program the Red Good. Cross has. Isn't that great? They actually, keep they actually have curriculum for even primary grades. It's amazing. I remember Wentworth used to have drives occasionally when I was there, but mm -hmm. that was a very long time ago. <laughs> Not that long. Yeah. It feels like a long time ago for me. <laughs> yeah. Now if it was eight or nine years ago. It's a lifetime. You were talking about Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> And then this I thought was fantastic. Just, and I'll be talking about the uh, kindergarten one too after this, but there'll be a third grade pop school social on the 15th of August. I feel that it's important that I also say the rain date on the 16th. Um, it's from 5.30 to 7 p.m. at the playground, hosted by the PTA. That seems really late for a pop, pop school social, but it sounds like it'll be fun it's to get the third grade together before they join the... After work hours. At, yes, I know. <laughs> That's past my bedtime. <laughs> um, <laughs> but to get the third grade together before they start the new year. And then on the next slide, I have something very similar. The kindergarten are doing the same thing at the playgrounds of each of the schools. Pop schools seem to be a very popular thing. Um, this will be on Saturday the 11th, but this one's at 4 o'clock. 
And the rain date is the... That's the Sunday. Sunday's the rain date. Oh, Sunday's the rain date. Yes. Um, So, this one's at 4 o'clock. Saturday's the original date. Rain date's on Sunday. And that's all I have. Thank you. That's how we get friends to stick together. And is there, like, I don't know. Is the middle school doing a, like a sixth grade? Yes, they have one. Okay. Because that's sometime in August as well, but I don't know. Yeah, there's a... 22nd, oh, August. Oh, 22nd. <coughs> oh, yeah. It's the, um, it's like a open, it's yeah. not an open house, but it's, you can go in it. All right, thank you, Don. Sure. Uh, moving on to 10.0 recognition. As I stated earlier, it's oh, okay, kind of combined right. with my Sorry. report. Uh, 11.0 new business. Uh, 11.1 uh, remaining <coughs> minutes. Move approval is printed. Second. All those in favor? Five. Opposed? Zero. Um, we're on to 11.2, the first reading of policy BE, Board of Education. Meetings. Um, we're combining two policies, and it goes into the BEDA, which is being removed. But adding to BE 1.0, it will be the policy of the board to announce all meetings publicly. Except in the event of emergencies, such announcements will be made by the superintendent or designee in ample time to allow public attendance and will be disseminated in a manner reasonably calculated to notify the general public. I'm not going to read the other ones because they're already existing policy. <coughs> so that you're saying that's the only change? That's the only change to that. Yeah. And, um, oh, and I just want to note that that's literally the exact wording from the policy that we're planning on removing. It was like the only thing in that policy, so it made sense to add it to the other policy. Mm -hmm. um, and also this, um, I know Leanne has just recently become policy chair, but this work had started when we had advice from Maine School Management to look at some of our policies regarding gender creation and board self-evaluation, but then as policy work tends to go, once you start looking at one policy, you tend to start need to look at other policies that are re cross-referenced, and so that's why we started to kind of look at some of these board policies because when we looked at some of the other policies, we needed to look at these and noticed that some of them were in need of updating. Mm -hmm. So, um, any other any discussion? With regards to what you just said, Mary, I can I don't recall what year it was, and I don't know the cost or what the cost would be today. But at one point, when we were doing this type of activity as a board. We gave the board uh, policy manual to Drummond Woodson and paid them a fee to look at all the duplications and, and recommendations for consolidation. And it's possible that as the board moves forward that it may be something that you wish to consider uh, because it hasn't been done for a long time. That's a great point. I actually have gone through, pulled in the, the ones that Drummond have, the ones that Maine State have against what we have, and there's a lot of non-alignment between what Maine State says we need to have as required, what Drummond is saying is required or not required, and then what we have in place, from naming to um, policy numbers to just general policy that they have. So there's a lot of work that's going to need to be undertaken by the policy committee over at least the next year or so. Well, I think it's something that once you have a new board in place, that it is something that you might consider. As I say, I have no idea the cost, but I do know that it was at the time that we did it, it was very beneficial. Yeah, I do know in my time with policy, that the policy seems to be right now the policy committees has followed Robin Woodson's recommendations because I know sometimes the main state management recommendations, or, you know, main, main school management association sometimes has like different um, codes for the policies and so that can get confusing mm -hmm. if you try to do both. Sometimes it, I know that was what previous board members had, had shared in, in meetings that I had been in. Yeah, you trying to follow both is, is really difficult yeah, because you do just, one thing or the other. Yeah. Understand. I'm just yeah. really trying to Oh, yeah, no, I just wanted to share that because that was two. what was shared with me when I, you know, being yeah. on. I, oh. I do remember when it was sent out um, to 
to Drummond and Woodson because it did get too confusing, and I would say it was probably about eight years ago, oh, eight, yeah. Yeah. eight or nine years ago, and at that time the board decided to follow one, which was Drummond, to do that. Okay. Thank you. All right. Are we ready to vote? Any other discussion? All those in favor? Five and zero. Uh, any, all those in um, Moving on to 11.3, first reading of policy BDE board standing committees. Okay. This one's big. Um, and what I'd like to do is to break it into each one of the changes and then talk about the change and then move to the next one because there are so many. <coughs> um, 7.4, which is being modified, added. Um, outreach and communications task team to develop and oversee the school board communication strategy, manage social media posts, create quarterly newsletter, ensure school board web page is up to date, and generate other forms of public communications. Prior to publication, all communications must be reviewed by the school board chair and superintendent. So this is establishing the communications as a standing committee. No, yes. that's coming further. No, that, that, that is this. Okay. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Are we going to take them piece by piece? Or yes, I'd like to take it piece by piece because I think it's, there's just so much meat to all of them. I mean, unless folks would rather do it all at once. You have to have a motion before you can have discussion. Yeah. Okay. And a second before you can have discussion. Yeah, that's, I'm not, okay. My suggestion is, in the last line must be reviewed by the school board, period, and the superintendent, Jackie, not just. We, oh, we, need, we need a motion. motion. We need a motion. Pardon me? We, we need, need a motion, motion first. Oh, okay. That's what I said. Did you want to take it one by one or? Uh, we need a motion to look at it, though, to, to have discussion. We need a motion. Okay. Motion I'm just going to read them all and we'll do the one motion. Okay. Um, sorry for the folks that I should have it's probably okay. printed this off so that you could look at it because it is a lot. Um, long-range facilities planning, to oversee long-range facilities planning, including enrollment projections, programmatic needs, and the health and safety of facilities, review and recommend actions related to long-range facility needs, and in there is striking curriculum liaison, um, shall be formed by the director of curriculum of the final review and selection of new textbooks and instructional materials, including technology for recommendation to the board as a whole. And then 7.6, liaisons. Serve as a means of communication between different groups connected to the school district and maintain communication between designated groups and the school board. Designated groups listed below, legislative, the MS, M, MSBA, vocational, teacher evaluation, Scarborough Education and Business Council, health, safety, and security advisory team, and the pre-K task force. Now we can go for the motion. Do I have a motion? Sure. Motion to discuss the three changes to policy BDE. It would be motion to approve the first reading of the policy. Okay. Motion to approve the first reading of policy BDE. Second. All those in favor? Do we have the discussion? Oh, wait, no, no we discussion. Have discussion. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, this, this is going differently than usual. Um, no, so any discussion this. on those? So maybe we can discussion. now break it up into yeah. Yeah. 7.4, 7.5, and 7.6. Okay. So 7.4. So starting with. At 7.4, I move to amend by removing chair in the last sentence. So I also have an issue with that sentence um, <coughs> because I agree that anything that, well, in my time as communications, anything that I've written up besides some Facebook posts basically I have asked the the entire board for their um, ideas um, but I do have a so putting this in the policy creates can create difficulties for something like Facebook right so I made up 10 memes to post during the budget season. 
they went one each day. I did all the work myself. And um, if I had a question about information, I went to Joanne or Julie or the finance chair. But if I had had to wait for approval from the entire board, it would have tied, it ties your hands with something like Facebook. But I'm not saying that I wouldn't do it under normal circumstances. Like anytime we've written a letter or anything like that, I've always asked for the entire board to review it. Um, but it is a communication representative of the school board, and therefore, that's why I am moving to amend mm -hmm. that. It, if any member of the school board has objections to the data or the information, they because it is representative of the school board. It is a subcommittee of the board, and it represents the board. And that's all I'm saying. Right. I understand what you're saying. But sometimes I'll post, like, I literally take a picture of the agenda for the meeting and I post it on Facebook. And f for me to do that and then wait till I hear from seven people whether they agree to that, it's the meeting's gonna be over by the time I post it. Right, so I think that's why it says board chair and superintendent. I agree it would be really hard to wait for everybody to weigh in on everything. But something like the agenda, for example, is developed by the board chair and superintendent. So I know that's only one example, but that already is the process and there's policies that define that. I think that, again, thinking about policies are supposed to be something that withstands the board over time and it's mm -hmm. not about what you would do or what one individual board member would do. It's meant to create a structure that can create guidance. But I think that it also can be part of the communications um, strategy that you're working on that talks specific to so what is the procedure for Facebook posts because that might look really different than it is for say a letter or a newsletter or um, I agree but and my point is that this sentence if we end up with a policy for Facebook posts that we could be going against our own policy <laughs> if it doesn't adhere to what this sentence says I mean that's still considered a communication well, first of all, would you agree that the communication that goes out from the KIPP committee represents the board's opinion? Well, usually it's just facts. So it's not, no, it's not really an opinion. I mean, sometimes it does. It, you, you've never felt that you posted facts that were in error? Me? Personally? Anybody? I don't think, I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. Like I said, I'm not saying that it's not a good idea to review with someone. It could be Joanne, it could be Julie, it could be the finance chair. I just think that putting this sentence in, saying prior to publication, all communications must <coughs> be reviewed by the school board and superintendent is too restrictive. I would agree with that um, because it could then go into anything that comes out of finance, anything that comes out of policy is going to require approval across the board and it, it makes us more than just restrictive, we are completely hand-tied on being able to do anything. And that's been a struggle of how do we stay in front of communications, how do we stay transparent, and I think having everything be, have to be approved before we can say it or post it or communicate, it does a disservice to the people that we should trust as team members as well as to the community. I, mean, I, I understand what's being asked for. I agree, Jackie, that there can be, we're speaking as a board, but we need to trust one another that what's going out there is being fact-checked, that it is clean and clear and we are communicating concisely 
and to trust the folks in our own communications to post proper things without having it be approved every time they want to send an agenda or say, you know, get out and vote on a certain topic. And I do think the way we work as a board, there's a lot of planning for any, you know, if there's a, if there's a plan to do, put out a budget information, there's a plan for that. So that's something that, that we'll have time to, you know, to speak with either the superintendent or the chair, you know, that to me that's preparing for that I think is important. And I think the fact that we are a board and, and we speak as with one voice, it makes it different than, than other, other groups. I would just, with that sentence, um, I would encourage you to leave it like that for this reason so that um, you will have that opportunity to post something pretty fast because I think you could get in touch with those two people or, or, or a designee at, um, pretty quickly to post on Facebook, but have the understanding that any quarterly newsletter, um, the web page, and other public communications would have the full board support because the quarterly newsletter would take some time to create. It wouldn't be just one day. It would be uh, probably a board effort to get information from finance, um, long-range planning, um, and the different subcommittees. So I would just remind us that this is a vote for first reading and that's something that policy can bring back and then make a recommendation for second reading. Okay. You don't have to decide it today. Right. Um, I'll withdraw my motion. Okay. Um, are we ready for a vote then? No. Uh, no. We haven't discussed 7.5 or 7.6. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. So what's the change in 7.5? It's just taking out the curriculum liaison? So 7.5, we did not have um, a descriptor for our Long Range Facilities Planning Committee, and this is a committee that has existed and um, certainly needs to reconvene as soon as we have a full board, um, given our K-2 needs specifically and some of our other building needs. We now have the results of our rating cycle applications and we know that we're not near the top, so <laughs> we need to get back on our long range facility planning. Um, and then the curriculum liaison was not a, a position that has been filled um, and really the full board, um, the purview of the full board is to adopt curriculum and we always have had representatives, much like Mary was just on the PD redesign committee, we always like to include board members in our work. Um, so that's not something that's been like a formal position that's been filled. So would that make sense to put it down under the designated groups? Yes, yeah, that could be 6? a consideration. Sure. Okay. Um, and based on the earlier discussion, this would also need to come back to policy for the inclusion of, I guess, a changing 8.0 to be the meeting-wise agenda adoption for these committees. <coughs> and then 9.0 would be other committee assignments. Yeah, I think we would want to work out where it goes mm -hmm. um, and then what the language is we want to include. Any other discussion on, on BDE? Are we ready for that? Well, I actually, I do have a question. So uh, 7.6, it, it spells out the groups who um, have a board liaison. If there was a new group that wanted a board liaison, would we be able to do that without going against this policy? Well, you, you know see, what I mean? Yep. Um, so see how 7.7 .7 and 8.0 are, are really vague intentionally so that it's not overly restrictive and that okay. if a group or a committee was formed and a board member rep would be beneficial to that group, then we have purview to do that under this policy with 7.7 .7 and or 8.0. Okay. That's how communications was formed, would be 7.7 .7 initially. It was actually right. an extension of budget. 
um, and talking about how do we communicate about the budget better. So that's why now we're saying, oh, we've done that for um, a couple of years now. We want to formally make that a standing committee. Okay. Any other discussion on BDE? No? Are you ready for a vote then? Sure. Uh, all those in favor? Of first reading. Of first, first, reading. Reading. first reading of BDE for its standing committees. All so those this is first reading and it will go back. To and it committee and it to will. have any changes made. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. Uh, just as a point of clarification, if it's coming back with multiple changes, would that not be a new first reading with the changes? Not necessarily, because we've discussed them. Okay. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Five. Five and zero. Um, moving on to 11.4, removal of policy BEDA notification of board meetings. Um, so BEDA is, we included 1.0 in BE, which I guess I have to read it again. It will be the policy of the board to announce all meetings publicly, except in the event of emergencies. Such announcements will be made by the superintendent designee in ample time to allow public attendance and will be disseminated in a manner reasonably calculated to notify the general public. In 2.0, whenever possible, board members will receive notice of emergency meetings at least three days in advance. Um, such notice will include the date, time, location, and purpose of the meeting. The superintendent designee will, whenever practical, notify local representatives of the media by the same or faster means as used to notify board members. And so that is the policy that's being struck. Move approval for first reading. This is a removal. No, it's just a removal. removal. It's just a removal. We just do one. Yep. Thank you. We still need a motion. A motion. <coughs> and we need a motion to, to remove, though. Move to remove policy BEDA, notification of board meetings. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion on that? I just want to say again that what Leanne said, 1.0, we took that exact same paragraph and put and added it into. B -E. B E, and the second paragraph, we already have that in B E, except that it's slightly different, and they actually contradicted each other. So that's why we're taking this policy out. Any other, any other comments or questions? Are ready for a vote then? All, all those in favor? Removal policy B E D A. Five and zero. Um, moving on to 11.5 facility fee waiver request. Um, we have recently received a request from Robin Doms. She, uh, Robin works in the planning department here in Scarborough and she's writing to ask that we consider waiving the fees associated with use of the Wentworth cafeteria. This is something that the board has done for the past nine years. Um, Robin hosts a fundraiser to benefit Maine's children, the Maine Children's Cancer Program. This is a scrapbooking crop you know any scrapbookers um, and there's approximately 75 people who attend and it's um, scheduled to be held Saturday September 15th from 9 to 5 because um, they choose September specifically because September is National Childhood Cancer Awareness Month um, and uh, in the past the crops have been very successful raising over $25,000 for Maine Children's Cancer Program so by waiving the fee it allows all of the proceeds to go straight to the organization. <coughs> Move approval for the waiver. Second. Any discussion? The only other thing I would add is that um, this is a very personal um, project for Robin as her daughter was diagnosed with leukemia in December 2003 and she passed away in 2006. Yes, she so did. Um, for two years, the main cancer. Uh, main Children's Cancer Program really supported their family, and so this is her way of giving back, and I think it's really admirable, and um, thank her for her time and effort in doing this work. And I think she's been doing it, because I remember appro approving this last year. This has been a number of years. Yep, nine, this nine, is nine, past okay. nine years. This nine is years. number 10. Yes. Well, it's wonderful. Wonderful that she's yep. doing that. Um, I'm happy to. Yes. Are we ready to vote, then? All those in favor? Five and zero. Um, moving on to 11.6, uh, 2018-19 school board goals. Um, 
in our last our last few meetings, we've been working on our self evaluation, and after the evaluation, uh, the superintendent after we worked on the evaluation and looked at our looked at the self evaluation, um, and the goals that the entire board had created, uh, the superintendent and I had worked for I think about four hours to develop goals that tried to represent the um, wishes of the of the board. Um, and shared that with the board, I believe it was maybe a week and a half and ago. Um, but there's been a, more feedback on the goals recently, just, just um, today. So I know some of our board members, Jackie, I don't think you were able to see all of the feedback about the goals. So I would move to table um, this goal setting discussion um, and to work to, to be addressed in a workshop because I don't think we can address all of the all of the questions regarding the goals you know in the time that we have today so so I'm, I move to table the goal setting to a um, workshop at a later at a later date okay. and then I also um, when looking at the school board goals you know regarding policy I I also think that we need to address the AD and ADA policies because those relate to our goal setting because I know they also have goals within them, and then we are setting goals, so some, some of that is in conflict and is out of date. Mary, you have a tabling motion that you Right have, now, so I'm going to say, I'm sorry. to deal with yeah, first. So, yeah, so, so I would like to move to table the goal setting. Second. Um, any discussion on that? No discussion on tabling motion. Oh, I'm sorry, no discussion on tabling. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Five and two. Um, 11.7 appointments. Yes, we have four exciting appointments tonight. The first one is 11.7.1 .1 ESL teacher. Mara Heffernan has been nominated to fill this position created by a resignation. Ms. Heffernan received her Bachelor of Science degree in Communication Disorders from the University of Massachusetts and her Master's of Education in Deaf Education from Boston University. She anticipates receiving her second master's in literacy education in December 2018 from USM. Ms. Heffernan began her career as an ESL teacher in Tokyo, Japan. Since then, she has been both an ESL teacher and a teacher of the deaf in several schools in Southern Maine, including three years at Blue Point School and Wentworth Intermediate School some time ago. She also most recent, she was, has most recently been a teacher of the deaf at the Maine Educational Center for Deaf and hard of hearing in Falmouth. Ms. Heffernan will be placed on step 24 of the Masters Plus 30 scale per the collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Mara Heffernan as an ESL teacher. So move. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Five and zero. Awesome, great. The next is 11.7.2, high, high school English teacher. Amanda Russo has been selected to fill this position created by a retirement. Ms. Russo earned her Bachelor of Arts degree in Media Studios with a media production concentration from the University of Southern Maine, where she also received her master's degree in education. Ms. Russo was an English teacher at Thornton Academy, Academy for nine years. In 2016, she was nominated by Thornton Academy for the 2016 Maine Teacher of the Year for her development of a program called Freshman Focus. Since then, she has been a long-term English substitute at Yarmouth High School and most recently at Falmouth Middle School. Ms. Russo will be placed on step 10 of the master scale per the collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Amber Russo as a high school English teacher. So move. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Five and zero. 11.7.3, uh, Wentworth School Assistant Principal. <laughs> Bremer Stoner has been chosen to fill this position due to a resignation. Mr. Stoner received his Bachelor of Science degree from Keene State College in Keene, New Hampshire. He received his Master's of Education and his Certificate of Advanced Studies from the University of Southern Maine. Mr. Stoner was an elementary classroom teacher for two years in Bellevue, um, Washington, for five years in Gray New Gloucester, and for the last seven years in South Portland. For one year, he was an interim principal at Small Elementary School in South Portland. The recommendation is to appoint Stephen Bremer 
Stoner, Bremner Stoner as the assistant principal at Wentworth School. So moved. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Mine was zero. Welcome. Congratulations. Congratulations. Mr. Stoner, did you want to say a few words? Yeah. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, I'll be brief. I just wanted to say that um, as Julie mentioned, I have been a public educator for the last 15 years, uh, all in grades three, four, and five. Um, but before that, I was a summer camp kid and counselor uh, up the road in Bridgeton, Maine. I eventually became a trip leader, head counselor, and unit director. And I share this because um, it was these early leadership experiences that uh, led me to be a classroom teacher in the first place and then take on leadership roles while still teaching. Uh, I'm a people person. I enjoy building relationships in the community. Uh, and I look forward to being an advocate for students and their families uh, and my fellow educators uh, in this new role at Wentworth. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. And which summer camp were you at? Uh, Winona, on this pond. Oh, I know Winona. I was at Tapawingo <laughs> for 15 years. Sorry, which one? I was at Tapawingo. Oh, OK. For a long time. That's <laughs> code language. Yeah. 11.7.4 <laughs> <laughs> <It's 11. laughs> high school assistant principal, one year position. Edward Buckley has been selected to fill this position created by a realignment. Mr. Buckley earned his Bachelor of Arts degree in Mathematics from the University of Southern Maine, where he has also earned his Master's in Education Administration. Mr. Buckley was principal at Pownall Elementary School for two years and principal at St. Bridget's School for five years. Most recently, he was a math instructor in the Portland Public Schools. The recommendation is to, is to appoint Mr. Edward Buckley as a high school assistant principal, and this is a one-year position. So move. Second. Discussion? Uh, all those in favor? Mine is zero. Welcome. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Mr. Buckley, would you like to say a few words <coughs> to introduce yourself to the community? Thank you. I would just like to express my gratitude. I'm ex so excited and filled with energy. I can't wait to get started. Mm -hmm. I'm just pumped. We have a wonderful team at the high school. And I know, you know, the positive energy that I felt, you know, in today and the other day is just uh, really, really exciting. And as you mentioned, I had, had I, we said, when I sat down today with the superintendent, Kuchenberger, we discovered that I have been in education for 28 years, and I was like, oh my goodness, that can't, that can't be possible. <laughs> uh, and I have, uh, I live in Portland, I have two children, one who just graduated from high school from South Portland, and I have another who is a junior, and I'm starting to feel that empty nest syndrome, and, uh, just the way that, just the chance to connect with high school kids. I, I just want, want to express my gratitude. I'm so pumped. You're going to see me. I'm going to be in there tomorrow. So I, know you're, I know my first day is not till Monday, but I'm coming in and I'm just ready to go and we're going to have an awesome year. Uh, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. I would just add that I feel so fortunate to have both of you joining our leadership team and both of them have been eager to come right in. Um, Bremner was in today working with Kelly and you know getting some paperwork filled out. And thank you to the superintendents who are also gracious to release you so we could start working with you and building relationships. Welcome aboard. Okay, um, 12.0, motion to go into executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA 405-60 for the purpose of discussing the 2018-2021 administrator's contract to return to public session. So moved. Second. Um, all those in favor? Five votes. So that will mean we will be going into executive session, but we will be returning back to this room. Back to this room. 